Okay, so we're uh, going to take a look at if statements uh, in robot C. So, uh, so to understand if statements, we have to understand something about what's called Boolean logic. And it's, it's, it's easy, you've been doing it for years, it's just that it's a little bit different in a programming language, okay? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start off on doing a new file. Okay, and the first thing we're gonna do as usual is we're gonna save that new file. Okay, my name's gonna be a little bit long. Yours should just be something that you can recognize. Okay, so what we're gonna focus on is if statements, and we're gonna be using um, we're going to be using a two switches to control a motor, okay? All right, so we're going to go ahead and add those just uh, for the initial setup here. So we're going to have a digital switch, uh, so one limit switch. Uh, we're going to call it left switch. Uh, it's going to be a touch sensor, and then we're going to call right switch. And it's going to be a touch sensor. And then we're going to have a motor, and that motor is going to be, um, we're going to call it um, just wheel motor. Okay, it could be named anything. Uh, wheel motor, uh, VEX393 motor. We're going to go ahead and click OK. So we've got two switches and a wheel motor, okay? Or two switches and a motor, okay? You can name it anything you like. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add in our while loop. Okay, so we're going to put everything inside of an infinite loop. Okay, that's that's kind of standard procedure. Okay, so you can either work things out initially. Sometimes it's easier to work out your programming first and then put it into a while loop at the end, like an infinite loop at the end. In this case, we're going to go ahead and just put everything into a loop at the very beginning and then work from there. Okay, so we're going to open up control structures and control structures again. We're going to drag over while. And remember we talked about the condition in a while loop. Uh, uh, the condition is going to be a statement of some kind. That's what we're going to go into now. Uh, for our while loop though, it's just going to be true. Okay. All right. So now when we, when the thing that we're uh, doing here initially is that we're going to use a switch, use the value of a switch to determine if a motor is going backwards or forwards. The motor, motor is always going to be in motion. It's just going to be going either backwards or forwards as the result of whether a switch is pressed or not. So if the switch is clicked, it goes forwards. If the switch is not clicked, it goes backwards. Okay? Makes sense, right? All right. So in order to do that, we're going to be using an if statement. So notice that while I build this kind of skeleton of this program, okay, so we're gonna, the skeleton really like determines the flow control in the program. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and drag over an if statement. We're gonna go ahead and drag over an if statement. So under, do, if you guys see if statement right here. Okay. Oh, whoops, I dragged over the wrong one. We want to drag over this if condition body else body statement, okay? So we're going to drag this over. Dragging it over, now in the future you won't need to do this, all right? But for now, um, it's, it's really very helpful, okay? I'm going to get rid of the bottom panel there just for now so we can see everything at once. Okay, so what you'll notice now is these, these bodies of code are getting further into this structure, right? Okay, so essentially what we have here is you have to start to, and, and you'll notice that this, this indenting, okay, do you notice that the indenting is very important? So everything inside of task main, do you see from line seven to 19, that's the code block for task main, okay? Inside task main, we have lines eight through, or eight through 18, right? Okay, so notice that those are tabbed over one tab, right? It's about three or four spaces. Now in robot C, the white space is just for our use. So the white space doesn't matter to the computer, it's just for us to organize the code visually, all right? It really matters though. By lining things up like this, by just clicking fix formatting, you can easily spot errors, okay? So notice that these, you know, what seemed like not very important at the beginning, these curly braces, 
are going to get more and more important, okay? All right, so we have this task main code block in which we have the while loop. Then we have the while loop code block, and inside there we have an if-else statement, okay? The if has a condition on it, so note that, that if has a parentheses and a condition. The if has its own code block, okay? So if the tr condition is true, if the condition is true, then this code executes, right? The code, the code in the if code block executes. If the condition is false, then the code in the else block executes. In this case, one or the other will execute, okay? So either it's going to run line 12 or it is going to run line 16. There's no case where it will not run either one. It's going to run one or the other, okay? If we did two if statements, one after the other, that wouldn't be the case. Both if statements could be false, okay? But in an if-else statement, one will run. Both won't run. So <laughs> it's going to get confusing. Okay, so with an if-else statement, if, this, if the if statement is true, the, then if the condition for the if is true, then the code in the if statement code block will run. If the if statement is false, the code in the else code block will run. Both will never run, and neither will never run. Okay, so it's one or the other, not both, and not none. Okay? All right. So now this time, we're not going to actually, the, the condition, um, so we're going to use just a simple code block this time. So in the if statement, all we're going to do is we're going to open up natural language, and under movement, we're just going to start motor, okay? And we're going to start, uh, the motor that we have is wheel motor, right? Wheel motor. And the speed is going to be 127, okay? And then for the else block, we're going to do exactly the same thing, okay? Except that the motor is going to be running in reverse. Okay, now the effect of this, regardless of, regardless of which one of these runs, it seems kind of odd to do this, right? Because there's no wait time, essentially. So what's going to happen is each of these lines of code takes about, um, I think it's 10 milliseconds. It's about a hundredth of a second to run, okay? So the effect of this is that while it's looping, line 12 or line 16 is going to run every hundredth of a second, right? Okay, so the effect of it is to have the motor constantly running full speed or constantly running full speed in reverse, all right? Okay, so that is basically the code. The last thing we're gonna do is now put in the if statement. So now we're gonna put in the logic. Well, when does the, the motor run in forward and when does it run in reverse? That's what we're gonna determine now, okay? Now we could just put true. If we put true, the motor would always run forward. If we put false, the motor would always run in reverse. Okay, but we're gonna go ahead and put a condition in. And how, what we're gonna do is we're going to read the value of the limit switch, okay? So we have, a, we have a switch, we had a left and right switch, right? We're gonna use left switch. In this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up um, sensors at the left, open up variables, and we're gonna drag over sensor value. Okay, now notice sensor value is, a, is, sensor value is actually the name of a data structure, so it's the name of a list, okay? So if you're familiar with Java, it's like an array list or list, list, is it list, list array? Java has a bunch of different ones. So, uh, okay, so anyway, it's a list um, or an array, whichever one you wanna call it. But then basically we're gonna reference that sensor by its name. So inside this array, we have, or this list of, of uh, sensors, we have left switch, okay? Cause that's one of the sensors that we've defined uh, in our motors and sensor setup. Okay, and so this right here results in a value. Okay, when we say, hey, we're basically saying, hey, go get the value of left switch out of sensor value array. That's what we're saying with this. Okay, we're saying, hey, in that list of values, right, that common delimited list of all the values, go get the value for uh, left switch out of the list called sensor value. Okay, and that's gonna come back as either a zero or a one. Okay, so when this, when, this, when this code runs, 
you can think of this as the value of zero or of one, okay? It's a zero if the switch is not clicked. It's a one if it is clicked. That's all there is to it, okay? So when it goes and gets that value of, um, when it goes and gets the value for left switch out of sensor value, it's gonna return an integer either zero or one, okay? All right, now what we're gonna do with that is we're going to check it against a value that we want. So we're gonna say, okay, if the sensor value of left switch is equal to one, then this is gonna, so, so what's gonna happen here? We're gonna say, hey, we want, the, we want this code to run if sensor value is equal, sensor value of left switch is equal to one. That's what we're saying here, okay? So when, this, when, the, when the program looks at this um, statement right here, sensor value of left switch is equal to one, it's gonna come back with one of two values, right? It's a true or a false, all right? This double equal sign, so in math, the equal sign is, is making a statement, it's making an assertion, right? Like, oh, this side of the equation is equal to the other side, right? It's almost like it's asking the question, right? If it's equal, then the statement's true. If it's not equal, the statement is false, right? In math, okay? In programming, it's a little bit different. A single equal sign is an assignment. It's saying A is equal to two. You're assigning the value of two to a variable A with a singles equal sign, okay? A double equal sign is asking a question. It's asking the question, is sensor value of left switch equal to one? It's asking a question. It's saying, is it equal? Is it? Is it equal? It's asking. And it, the answer comes back as either true or false. Either this is true, if it is equal, it's true. Okay, it evaluates to true. If it's not equal, it evaluates to false. Okay, so that's, that statement is either true or false. So the value of the left switch in the sensor value array comes back as a, as a num numeric value, as an integer. It compares to via the double equal sign to a, to a value that you give it. That statement is then evaluated to true or false, and the result is a, a Boolean value, true or false, okay? All right, so that is basically it. So given this, so, uh, so how this is going to run is that once it's compiled, it's gonna go on the cortex, right? The cortex is gonna find task main. It's gonna to start to run it, okay? Remember that um, with the, with the block of the code block of the while loop, it's gonna run 10, 11, or sorry, 10, 12, 14, 16, and then go back up and check. The while loop in our case has been hard coded to true, so it's always gonna keep looping, okay? The if statement then is gonna say, okay, if the sensor value of left switch is equal to, is, is clicked, it's gonna be a one. If it's not clicked, it's a zero, right? So it's comparing it. Is the current value of left switch a zero? If it, if it is, then this is equal to, then this is evaluates to false and line 16 runs. If sensor value of left switch is equal to one, if that evaluates to true, then line 12 runs. Okay. Now, how is it? So, so this is a very simplistic example, right? I'm going way into detail to hopefully to help you guys understand it. If, um, so while this is actually running, it can become very confusing as to what the sensor values are, okay? So in order to do that, in order to uh, get the sensor value, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these debug windows, okay? All right, so basically, once you get this program debug, right here, this window, okay, with the start button, you can go up and you can turn on the debugger windows, okay? So make sure motors and sensors is clicked. And then what we can do is we can click on the sensor right here, now mine, uh, mine, the battery wasn't plugged in, but you'll see the sensor value right here. In fact, let me just do that real quick. Okay, so my sen my sensor is in a different port, so I'm going to go ahead and change it to uh, to port nine. Uh, 
Okay, so now I'm going to download the robot. Okay, and once we start here, what you'll see is that left switch in port 9, if I click it, you can hear it going back and forth, right? So basically the value you'll see down at the bottom here for left switch, it's unclicked, now it's clicked. Unclicked, clicked. And you can see the value of this of this sensor you're looking at. So all the sensors in Robot C, it's very, very helpful to watch their live value as it's running and then watch how the code is reacting uh, through the highlighting the code. Okay, uh, try your first uh, if statement here and best of luck. <laughs> 